thank you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have an opportunity to study in our Sunday school this morning a wonderful thing, the amazing messenger, an amazing messenger called to proclaim. Today is January 3rd, 2021. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And our scriptures are coming from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 22. The key verse of the lesson study for today is, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. May we pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this day, this opportunity for life that is in these bodies. We thank you, God. Thank you. you are our help, and you are our Lord, and you are the Savior that we are look, have looked to for, and we have found you, and we thank you, God. Amen. We thank you for this word that is truth, as it is being proclaimed back in the day. It is being proclaimed now. And we trust the word is truth. In Jesus' name, we ask you to bless families and friends and neighbors and neighbors' children everywhere. Mm -hmm. Have mercy upon us. Mm -hmm. Hold us in the hollow of your hand. For we can do nothing without you. Mm -hmm. So we are counting on you, Lord, to open up our understandings, to help us to know what the word is saying, to make it a part of our daily lives so we may go forth and do and share what the word teaches. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name, who is the Christ. Amen. 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 The introduction and overview of our lesson for this morning is, the Messiah has come to set us free from the bondage of sin and death. The whole purpose of Christ's coming was to rescue us whoever we are, and wherever we are physically or spiritually. God's message is clear. He wants all to be rescued. So how did Jesus do this? Jesus wrapped a roll of, roll of flesh, a robe of flesh around himself and came to die on the cross to pay sin's price to make that possible. Jesus is the only reliable light of our path to heaven. We can find our way home only by following Jesus. Amen. He is the light of the world yes. to lead us all from the path of darkness into the light of the Father. So how, does, how is this done? How is this proclaiming? Done. How is it done? Well, we've come to know that preaching is the way in which we are accustomed to doing, and preaching is a calling of and from God. Mm -hmm. It is one of the methods God uses to communicate his word to his people. Amen. There are so many examples of prophets or preachers who have proclaimed God's word to his people. Mm -hmm. Back in the Bible day, Noah preached to a group of naysayers who didn't heed his proclamation to repent, mm -hmm. and they were all lost in a flood with the exception of Noah's family. Mm -hmm. Peter preached, change your hearts and lives and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Philip preached and healed many weak and crippled people in Samaria. He met on the road an Ethiopian eunuch and explained to him the gospel of Jesus Christ and baptized him when they came to some water. Modern day preachers such as Martin Luther King Jr., Louis Farrakhan, Malcolm X, Adam Clayton Powell present common messages of liberation and justice for the oppressed. Their sermons have, been, have helped to establish a universal language for black identity, suffering, community building, unity, and love. While these preachers are and were great, Jesus is the greatest example of a preacher, a messenger. He is the greatest example because he is the Christ. And the message he preached was the life he lived so he could be the salvation for all. Amen. Then Jesus came and said, All power in heaven and on earth is given to me. Mm -hmm. So go and make followers of all. That is the introduction and the overview of today's lesson. The lesson today is outlined in three parts. The first one is empowered by the Holy Spirit. So if you look in your books, your quarterlies, you will see Luke chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. Those are our first two verses that we're going to look at. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Holy Spirit. And stories about him spread all through the area. He began to teach in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. Luke chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. After being tempted in the wilderness, Jesus came back to Galilee empowered by the Spirit to be a messenger from God with a message for God's people in Galilee. Amen. God declares that Jesus is my beloved son. Mm -hmm. Now, when John was baptizing down on the river, Jesus came and he was baptized mm -hmm. too. Amen. And while Jesus was praying, heaven opened. And the Holy Spirit came down on him in the form of a dove. Mm -hmm. Then a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, Amen. whom Amen. I love, and I am very pleased with you. Amen. Luke chapter 3, verses 21 through 22. Amen. Well, the fame of Jesus, the spiritual empowerment, is spread through all the surrounding region. Jesus' reputation grew, and people were coming from all over to hear his message. Jesus' words inspired the people, and amid such accolades and acknowledgments, he was glorified by all. Then the time came when he arrived, and it was time for him to go home. So the question that I ask you, and I ask you to be thinking about it as we go through our lesson today, is can you really go home again? Mm. Question again, can you really go home again? Yeah. Now the second outline of today's lesson comes from Luke chapter four, verses 16 through 19 as we continue the study. And this is what the second outline says. The mission, the mission of the messenger. What was the messenger's mission? The mission of the messenger. Luke chapter four, verses 16 through 19. Jesus traveled to Nazareth where he had grown up. 
And on the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue, as he always did, and stood up to read. The book of Isaiah the prophets was given to him. He opened the book and found the place where this is written. The Lord has put his spirit in me because he hath appointed me to tell good news to the poor. He has sent me to tell the captives they are free and to tell the blind that they can see again. God sent me to free those who have been treated unfairly and to announce the time when the Lord will show his kindness. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 19. Amen. Now, Nazareth was a town in Galilee, the home of Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph. Jesus grew up in Nazareth, but he made his base in Capernaum when he began his public ministry. His teaching in the synagogue at Nazareth made the people so angry, at one point they tried to kill him. Now Nazareth was close to a number of very important trade routes. And a lot of people came in and out of Nazareth. It was rather common knowledge that Nazareth had an unfavorable reputation. In the synagogue, Jesus was invited to preach as it would have been expected of a visiting rabbi. As was customary, Jesus went into the synagogue to worship on the Sabbath day. Now, standing up to read from the scroll was the traditional worship style. The worship leader would stand to read a passage from the book of the law, followed by a passage from the book of the prophets. Jesus intentionally opened it to the chapter in Isaiah, 61, verses 1 and 2, and he read it aloud. Amen. After that, he closed the scroll and sat down, indicating the start of his sermon. Every eye in the synagogue was fastened, focused on him, waiting for him to tell the interpretation of the text that he had just read. This was going to be a very short sermon. <laughs> but the message was clear. Yeah. The Messiah has come. Amen. Jesus has identified himself as the Messiah prophesied by Isaiah. Jesus infers to his listeners that his presence among them is evidence of this prophecy being fulfilled. Amen. God had already announced his divinity down there at the Jordan River. And this was said in the scriptures, while Jesus was praying, heaven opened, and the Holy Spirit came down on him in the form of a dove. Amen. Then a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son, whom I love, and I am very pleased with you. Luke chapter 3, verse 22. The message Jesus preached was the truth, and the words proceeded from his mouth with eloquence and skill. The listening audience was in awe at the manner in which Jesus presented himself with power and authority. Of course they were awestruck, since they, they knew Jesus' parents, and, and they knew Jesus' educational training, and they knew the manner in which he was reared. So instead of receiving the greatness and authority with which the message was shared, 
the listeners wondered where did he receive his learning? Mm -hmm. And where did he get this, this knowledge and, and wisdom from? Amen. So my question to ponder for us, even to this very day, my question is, hadn't they heard mm -hmm. the foretelling of the one who would come and dwell among us? Mm -hmm. Hadn't they heard? Mm -hmm. The word says, a child has been born to us. Yeah. God has given a son to us. Mm -hmm. He will be responsible for leading the people. His name will be Wonderful, mm -hmm. Counselor, yeah. Powerful God, mm -hmm. God who lives forever, Prince of Peace. Power and peace will be in his kingdom and will continue to grow forever. Amen. He will rule as king on David's throne and over David's kingdom. He will make it strong by re ruling with justice and goodness from now on and forever. Amen. The Lord all-powerful will do this because of his strong love for his people. Mm -hmm. That is Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6. And seven. So we can be sure that they had the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Mm -hmm. So the outline of the lesson continues in outline number three, taken from Luke chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. The marvel of the message. The marvel. Mm. The awe struck. They were awe struck. The, the amazement, which is what the lesson begins by saying to us. The marvel of the message. Luke chapter 4, verses 20 through 22. Now, Jesus closed the book. He gave it back to the assistant and sat down. Everyone in the synagogue was watching Jesus closely. Mm -hmm. He began to say to them, while you heard these words just now, they are coming true. Mm -hmm. And all the people spoke well of Jesus and were amazed at the words of grace he spoke. Mm -hmm. And they asked, isn't this Joseph's son? Mm -hmm. Jesus' life was his message, mm -hmm. and his message was his life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus assured us in the word by saying to us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me and the words that I shall do and say, Greater works than these shall he do. Mm -hmm. Because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. It appears easy. To forget that in addition to being the savior of the world, Jesus also was a preacher in the community. He shared the gospel. He went around talking and preaching and healing and doing all kinds of good things. His mission to heal the brokenhearted and to set free those in captivity required a message of hope personified, made personal, through a presence for action. And that is exactly what Jesus did. He went around doing what the word taught in terms of preaching the gospel to the poor, doing healing the brokenhearted. So I share with you the last part of the lesson today to let you know as we break it down and talk about to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. What does it mean? 
Now, I want you to remember and be reminded that the poor are not just those who like tangible stuff. They, not just about things and resources. We do have those that are poor. But when we don't have Jesus as our Savior and the Lord of our life, we are poor in spirit. Amen. Well, the word teaches us that there was a rich man. He, he was a man of the Pharisees, and his name was Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews. The same man came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do the miracles thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witnesses. We still got naysayers, but we still keep on sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is to preach the gospel to the poor. The scripture that I just shared came from the book of John chapter 3 verses 1 through 7 and verse 11. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7, and verse 11. And you know, Jesus went a little farther in sharing and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, and he told his disciples, he said, you know what? I must go through Samaria. I must need go through Samaria. And there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. And then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest me of a drink, which am a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest and knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me a drink, thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Amen. Living water to preach the gospel, the bread of life, and the living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and this well is very deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? How are you going to get it? Where are you going to get it from? You don't have anything to draw with. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water in this deep well yeah. will thirst again. Amen. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Amen. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me water. Give me Amen. some of this water Amen. that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. Amen. And when he has come, he will tell us all things. Amen. And Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto thee am he. Yeah. John chapter 4, verses 7 through 26. He came to preach the gospel to the poor. He, the messenger came to heal the brokenhearted. Oh, yeah. The brokenhearted. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. Come unto me, 
For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And when you call God, you can say, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness and according to the multitudes of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. Mm -hmm. Psalms 51, verse 1 and 51, verse 11. Mm -hmm. To heal the brokenhearted. He came to preach deliverance to the captives. Amen. Captives is bound, chained. And so the scriptures teach us that in the country of the Gadarenes, they met a man. And this man was sure enough bound. He had had demons living in him. They called them unclean spirits. And this man had been dwelling among the tombs. And no man could bind him. And no man could chain him. or, Because all night and all day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what do I have to do with thee, Jesus? That's them demons crying out in him. Jesus, thou son of the most high God, what do I have to do with thee? I abjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto the man, the demons that were in the man, come out of that man, mm -hmm. thy unclean spirit, come out. Mm -hmm. And all the demons besought him, saying, send us into the swines that we enter into them. And Jesus gave them leave. Mm -hmm. And the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine, and the herd ran violently over the cliff and into the sea. And there was more than 2,000 of them, and they were choked in the sea. And Jesus found the demon-possessed man sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. But the people in the city were afraid. And these people wanted Jesus to leave their city. They appeared to have more concern about the lost swine pigs mm -hmm. yeah. than the man's deliverance, mm -hmm. than the man's freedom oh, from the chains of the evil one. Yeah. The man who had been delivered wanted to go with Jesus. But Jesus said unto him, go home to thy friends yeah. and to thy family and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee and had had compassion on thee. Yeah. And he departed and began to, to tell mm -hmm. in Decapolis. He published it. He told mm -hmm. how great things Jesus had done for him. Right. And all the men, all the people were amazed. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Yeah. Further, the messenger came to proclaim and the recovering of sight to the blind. Yeah. Now, I, I would have you to know that blindness is not always physical blindness. Amen. Sometimes blindness is spiritual blindness. Right. But in the case study that we're going to look at today, this man was born blind. And when Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him a question. Who, who, who did it seem? Was it this man or was it his parents that he was born blind? Who? And Jesus answered, neither this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works 
of God may be made manifest in him. Yeah. That's why he was born like this. See, I must work the works of him that sent me Amen. while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. You see, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. So this is what Jesus did for this man who was born blind. He spat on the ground. He made clay of spittle, and he anointed the man's eyes. And Jesus said to him, go wash in the pool of Shalom. And he went his way. When he told him to do it, that man went. Yeah. He went, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Mm. You see, I once was lost, mm. oh. but now I'm fine. Mm. I was blind, yeah. but now I see. Mm. So the recovering of the sight, that is what the messenger came. He came to restore the sight of them that were blind. Yeah. He also came to set at liberty them that are bruised. Yes. In this life, we all know what it's like to experience being battered mm -hmm. or bruised. Mm -hmm. You may not even have been in a fight or anything like that, but you know you can physically, spiritually, mentally battered or bruised. Right. But believers know that there is a bomb, B-A-L-M, there is a bomb. Yeah. There is some medicine yeah. in Gilead yeah. that can set the wounded free. Mm -hmm. And this same bomb mm -hmm. can heal a sin sick soul. Yeah. Let me share about a, a nobleman. A, 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 in this case, study, this case, this narrative is about a nobleman. He, he was a rich man. He was well to do. But he was a nobleman. Folks thought well of him. But this nobleman sought Jesus because he had a child, you all, that was so desperately ill, yeah. feeling battered and bruised and hopeless and helpless, knowing what can I do? So he desperately sought Jesus for his ill child. And Jesus came into Canaan of Galilee where he had turned water into wine. Yeah. That his first miracle. And there he met a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. Right. Now remember I told you this man was a nobleman. He was used to people doing and falling down all over him. Yeah. But when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. Amen. For he was at the point of death. And Jesus said unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Oh. The number one said, but sir, come down, ere my child die. And Jesus said unto him, go thy way, thy son is alive. Amen. And the nobleman believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thou son liveth. Mm -hmm. And then required he of them the hour when he began to mend. What time did he start to get better? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him yesterday, mm -hmm. at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Mm -hmm. The fever broke. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus knew, the father knew, the man, the nobleman knew. Mm -hmm. He knew that it was at that same hour mm -hmm. in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. man was happy. Mm -hmm. His faith was strengthened. Amen. And not only that, he told us. Yeah. And his whole household accepted Amen. and believed on Jesus. Amen. John chapter 4, verses 47 uh. through 53. Well, the messenger not only came to heal the battered and bruised, but he came to preach what is called the acceptable year of the Lord. Yeah. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you are alive right now, and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, the acceptable year of the Lord is at hand. Amen. The acceptable year of the Lord is at hand. The word is now thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Yeah. And shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord mm -hmm. shall be saved. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. Yeah. How shall they call on him uh, in whom they have not believed? That's right. And how shall they believe in him mm -hmm. in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Amen. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Amen. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that Amen. preach the gospel of peace Amen. and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. That's right. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Mm -hmm. That's still the same question we're hearing today. Amen. Lord, who hath mm -hmm. believed our report? Mm -hmm. So then faith cometh by hearing, mm -hmm. and hearing by the word mm -hmm. of God. Amen. Romans chapter 10, verses 14 mm -hmm. through 17. Mm -hmm. The conclusion of the lesson today is the mission and the message continue to be the same. Amen. The mission and the message are to preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. To heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. Amen. To preach deliverance to the captives. The recovering of sight to the blind. Mm -hmm. To set at liberty them that are bruised mm -hmm. and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. So go mm -hmm. and make followers of all people in the world. Yes. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Father. And the Son mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Teach them to obey everything I have taught you and I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Amen. I submit this as our Sunday school lesson for January Amen. 3rd, 2021. Amen. I hope you receive it with our readiness of heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.